on a very high level if i can talk about in a very high level software testing is classified as a two things one is the functional testing and the second is non functional testing now again for the the functional testing and non functional testing has been broken into various uh, different types of testings the functional testing has been further broken down to unit testing integration testing system testing sanity testing smoke testing interface testing regression testing and beta testing so these are the some of the different types of testing and uh, functional testing similarly non functional area such as performance testing load testing stress testing volume testing security compatibility installation testing recovery testing reliability usability compliance and localization and so on so alpha testing is nothing but a, it is an another kind of testing which is normally will be done before we are sharing with the client this would be done by our developer itself just to ensure that every aspects of the application is really works or not what is acceptance testing acceptance testing is nothing but this is a final level of testing which normally does by the business users or a client to ensure that whatever they requested in the beginning the different user stories which has been really taken care for the acceptance testing or not will be validated by the business users so what is all about ad hoc testing so ad hoc the the name itself suggest ad hoc means it's a casual it is a casual way of testing the things so where we do not have any documentation we do not have any plan if somebody says that can you please test this functionality basically that time there is no requirements will be there there is no plan will be there right there is no test cases will be there or nothing will be there main motto here is how we can go and break the system by doing randomly different kind of testing by putting lot of uh, different kinds of data we are able to break the application then we'll go and lock the defect so what is all about accessibility testing accessibility testing is nothing but as a able person we are a able person where we are able to see we are able to visualize we are able to touch we are able to do everything for a able person let's think about in a bank application right the bank application can be accessed by the both able person people as well and disabled people as well now if bank people only enable the application for able people then that means you are not allowing disabled people to use the bank application so it is not a good aspect right hence almost all the companies they do prefer to provide a capability to access the their application for disabled people as well the disability could be the person can be deaf blindness or is mentally not stable or is a old age person or he may not be able to type he may not be able to speak up there are many disability aspects may be there even that kind of people also should be able to access the bank application or in that matter any application in order to test those aspects as well like whether your application can be accessed by the disabled people as well without having any challenges then that kind of testing which we normally perform is accessibility testing what is all about beta testing during beta testing so we'll be selecting certain users and we'll be giving the environment to them just to ensure that at least first level of feedback we can get from the selected customers and all these customers would be testing from the end user perspective once the feedback from the customer then development team will trying to fix those issues and they will give back to them again for further processing that is all about beta testing so what is all about back end testing so back end testing is nothing but there are various back ends available in the market these days we have a sql server is there mysql 
Oracle, different uh, open source databases are there. In these databases, the data will, would be stored in various uh, forms. It would be stored in the table format, stored in the image format, or a video format, and so on. Okay. If I have a registration page, when I try to register the application, then all the information which I entered in the registration page should move into the database. And when I try to enter it in the UI, and I also should go and validate it in the database, whatever I entered in the UI, whether that is really reflected in the database or not. Whatever I entered in the front end, even I can pump the data from the API as well. So whatever the methodology or the forms which I used to pump the data from one end to the back end, which is a database, then we should ensure that whatever the transaction which is performed from the front end or API, the respective data should be there in the database. So what is all about browser compatibility testing? These days, there are many operating systems are there. You name it, we have Windows, we have Linux, we have Solaris, we have Macintosh, right? Windows, there are so many operating systems. Again, each operating system, we have different uh, browsers as well. We have Windows, we have uh, Firefox is there, we have Chrome, we have IE. There are so many browsers again. Again, each browser, again, they have multiple variances in different operating systems. The application which is working in Windows browser. Let's take an example. Let's talk about Amazon, Flipkart, eBay. Now, when they implement this website or web applications, if they just test Google Chrome, now let's assume because this product has been only tested in Google Chrome, if customers like us, if you open the application, any of these browsers and try to open the Amazon.com, it will fail in multiple places. Because we have not tested it in the browser, we just tested it in Chrome. Now, if I'm not able to operate those websites, that means Amazon is going to lose their business. In that situation, we should test. We should test the application across all the industry standard popular browsers. Just to guarantee that your application would be working across all different combinations of browsers. So backward compatibility testing is nothing but, let's say we have a latest release. Let's say we have a release 10. So when we are trying to give a fix to release 10, right? There are certain features which are there in release 10, which is there also in the release 9, which is there also in the release 8, 7. Now, when some fixes you have made at the release highest version, then you should give the same fixes to the previous releases as well, such as 9, 8, because same issue which is there in the release 10 is also having the issues in the previous releases as well, where clients are already using it. Now, when we're trying to fix that, so someone has to test it, right? It could be UI fixes or it could be database fixes or whatever the fixes. So everything should be backported. And when we are backported, then so type of testing you should perform, which is backward compatibility testing. So next type of testing is block box testing. So what is all about block box testing? So black box is nothing but where I am not much worried about internal details of the applications. Black box means I have no clue what is there inside. Only outside how the application look like I know very clearly. But I do not know how internally it has been implemented, how it is really data is flowing from one end to another. Everything I won't be knowing it. Right? I will be knowing it very high level, which we call it as a block box testing. So boundary value testing is nothing but this is also another testing technique. Basically, boundary value testing is a testing technique. Basically, when you are trying to gather a test data, when you are trying to gather a test data where 
I'll be covering up a test data which is covering all the boundaries. Let's say we are talking about 1 to 2000. Now 1 to 2000, so we should also be testing for what if I give a data of 0 or negative or more than uh, 2000, right? How your application is going to behave? All the boundaries, we will be testing it just to ensure that your application really works as expected. What is all about branch testing? So branch testing is nothing but it's a white box testing. Is also we call it as a unit unit testing as well, which is normally does by the development team. Here we would be testing every flow of the application code where application code will be debugged every line of code and it is also been where while for loop different loops would be given in the program right and we are ensuring that for each data we are moving towards different flow of the application so that is all about uh, the branch testing so component testing is nothing but uh, again a white box testing basically this is also been done by developers when they are trying to write a code at the component level. What is end-to-end -end testing? So end-to-end -end testing is nothing but where we are giving a end-to-end -end perspective. When we are trying to test an application, we will be looking at the end-to-end -end perspective such as from the UI to the business logic to the database. right? And also across different networks which will be covering and every aspect would be taken care as part of the end-to-end -end testing where again the third-party APIs or third-party applications every aspects will be testing as part of the end-to-end -end testing. What is exploratory testing? So exploratory testing is again kind of a ad hoc testing where we are not doing a, a kind of a formal testing where we will be writing a detailed requirements or we will be writing a detailed test cases you won't you won't be doing there main role is we will have to able to navigate or explore the application from one source to a destination now if during exploration if you are seeing any issues which is coming in between then we will be logging the defects our goal is can we explore the application without having any issue Every line, every code, every section, every UI aspect, every business logic, we would be trying to explore in this way. That kind of testing, we call it as a explore testing or exploratory testing. The functional testing is nothing but where I will be more concentrated on the functional aspects of an application. And I am not bothered about any other things. So I will be only concentrating on the functional aspects I'm not much bothered about what is there inside how the code has been written everything I'm not much worried so this is a more of a block box testing so what is gorilla testing so gorilla testing is also can be called as a monkey testing where somebody will come and test the application left and right he tries to break the application without uh, much bothered about recommends all those things right so so what is an integration testing so integration testing is a kind of a testing where we try to integrate the various components we try to integrate the various different components when multiple components are getting integrated so we would be testing a kind of a testing which is nothing but a integration testing installation and uninstallation testing is a kind of a testing when we wanted to you install your application into their customer environment then a detailed steps of procedures would be followed right that could be full detailed uh, installation or i will be doing only partial installation or uh, it is a just a upgrade right there are various uh, way we can go and uh, install an application when customer is trying to install then if some issues faced out that kind of similar kind of operation you should do at your development stage as well just to ensure that how the end user they are going to install or upgrade or whatever right same kind of scenarios you should do it in your environment and see to that everything works as 
expected. That is all about installation and uninstallation testing. Recommend traceability matrix is a matrix. We put it in a table format. If you can see here, we put in a table format from recommend gathering to writing test scenarios to test cases and its status everything will be tracked in an excel sheet form or we have a tools also available test management tools also can be used to track all the mappings just to ensure that when we are signing up the project or a testing project we should see we have enough coverage this is a simple version of recommend traceability matrix. What are the different types of exploratory testing we have? The first thing is the freestyle exploratory testing. So in this style of testing, normally we do completely the testing in a more of a ad hoc fashion. There is no planning, there is no strategy, nothing will be there. Just we will be doing the testing in a more ad hoc fashion and there is no rules or format while doing this freestyle of exploratory testing. We are completely doing all kind of testing in a more random manner and the main purpose of this freestyle exploratory testing also to identify as many issues possible and log the same issue while doing this freestyle exploratory testing. Then the second type of testing is scenario based exploratory testing. Here the tester to be considered all the scenarios available in that functionality or what are the features which are being implemented based on that the tester will be exploring the application and he does the testing completely based on the scenario based or feature based to identify the issues and logging the issues. So next type of exploratory testing is strategy based exploratory testing. The strategy based exploratory testing here completely we we are doing in a more strategic way where we are going to adopt all the testing skills which is required to perform this exploratory testing and also we bring lot of testing approach and lot of testing techniques the testing techniques could be error guessing techniques or boundary value analysis testing or equivalence partitioning testing or any kind of testing which is available in software test techniques will be used to identify the issues in the application. What is all about exploratory testing? So what is peer review in software testing? This is also a very important question in any interview. The peer review is nothing but verifying or cross-checking the work done by your colleague. For example, let's say if your colleague has written a test case or test scenarios or a test plan or test strategy, someone has to cross check or someone has to verify whatever it has been written by your colleague is right or wrong. So that is where we will do a peer review. So normally the peer review will be done both using formal way and a informal way as well. Certain place you should go by more of a formal like email and sending a formal documents and, and so on. In informal way, we are just sitting next to the other person and we will review the, the documents. The third is because we are trying to do all the validations and verification of all the deliverables which is developed by your colleague that increases the quality of those test deliverables or any other deliverables when we are using peer review process. And also it helps to develop a team collaboration and a team spirit when we are doing peer reviewing in your software testing process. And also this is very cost effective whenever we are trying to validate or verifying your documents early in the game that would save a lot of cost then later. So what is all about a smoke testing? The smoke testing is also a testing process and it is a another type of testing. The smoke testing will be done to validate deployed application or a software build is stable or not. Verify the software build which is deployed on your test environment is good one or bad one. If it is good one then we will take it for further testing if it is bad one, we will return back to the development team to fix all the critical issues which is available in that build. 
So in order to make the decision, so we will be performing the spoke testing where we will be exuding around 10 to 15 critical test cases, very basic minimum test cases that would help whether the application is really smoking or not, whether all the crucial critical functionalities are still working or not. So that is the insurity or guarantee we will get as part of executing this critical test. It can be done using manual and or in automated way for every build which developer is going to generate and every build we will be getting deployed in our test environment and we will be executing these 15 to 20 test cases on build on build so that whichever the build which success in all these 15 to 20 critical test cases, then only we will take this build for further testing. If any of these 15 to 20 test cases are failing, then we will be returning this build back to the development and we will say these are the some of the critical functionalities are not at all working. It is not a good candidate for further testing. We will be returning back this build back to the development so that they can fix all these critical issues so that they can return back to us for further testing. The testing team will be wasting our time by choosing the wrong build. The critical functionality itself is not working, then what is the point of executing any other functionalities? So that is a crucial factors we will be testing as part of the smoke testing. And also the smoke testing, we will also call it as a BVT, build verification test, and we will call in a different names as well. When to perform? Ad hoc testing. Ad hoc testing is not a formal testing, which is an unscripted testing. We do not follow any test plan, any test cases while performing ad hoc testing. The main goal here is to find as many as defect possible. And this testing will be normally done during beginning of the project or in the middle of the project or end of the testing cycle. Whenever we feel that we wanted to find more defects, then we will go for an ad hoc testing. Ad hoc testing normally we do when we do not have a sufficient or a, having a very limited time. When the formal testing is completely done, then we will choose to go for ad hoc testing to find out as many as defects. Earlier in SDLC, normally the testing will be starting only after coding is completed. Now, because with the new kind of SDLC like Agile, we are trying to bring uh, even testing is also to the early stages. When some testers are involved early in the game, it would help you to plan better in terms of resourcing requirements, such as uh, what are the different softwares are required to test the application or what are the different tools are required, what are the different kinds of hardware, it could be desktops or it could be mobile devices are again what kind of different setup people are required whether we are required a manual tester or we need a automation tester or whether we need any domain expertise in order to test this application all those information can be gathered by our test layer test manager if they are trying to bring into the project as early as possible definitely define our strategy also in a very concrete way if the aspect is because the testers were involved early in the game early phases like recommend gathering testers also can review the the existing user stories or existing requirements so api testing is all about testing an api to find an issue or a bug the main job here is which we are going to test the API application programming interface. Why we really required API testing means there are some things like uh, which you cannot test using UI layer. So those aspects we will be testing as part of API testing. API testing normally which is very faster than UI. You can see in this picture this is how the overall uh, different types of testing which we normally perform unit testing, API testing and UI testing. The overall percentage of tests also we should have unit testing should be more in number than the API testing then followed by UI testing. The user acceptance testing will be performed by a business user or an end user. User acceptance testing will be done in the last stage of the testing. This is a last 
testing which we normally we do after our system testing regression testing the main purpose of the user acceptance testing is to test the end to end the business flow so whatever the the recommend business recommends we have the end users will test based on their experience based on their knowledge they will try to test all the scenarios from one end to another end to ensure that everything is going to work as expected as defined in the business recommend document what is all about web testing web testing is nothing but it is a process it is used to test or validate the web application web testing is a critical testing it is a critical testing to catch the issues before we are releasing the application into production what is all about inspection in software testing it is a more of a formal form of review process if you can see here this diagram the inspection is a last item where we follow i formal where one way of informal review will happen walk through will be happening technical review will be happening the first few reviews are more of a less formal stuff but inspection is a more of a high formal review process here whenever we are trying to do a inspection we will be making use of all the criteria which we define as part of the test plan test strategy just to ensure that whatever we are trying to inspect the test deliverables will be going along with that so here both entry and exit criteria also will be used as part of the inspection process and also post inspection like once a formal meeting is done then we will also be following up with all the stakeholders in a more a timely manner to get the right feedback from the all the stakeholders because this is a more of a formal uh, review process the main purpose of the inspection is not for finding issues or defects it can also be used to improve the processes so what is gamma testing in software testing in gamma testing will be more focusing on the security aspects of the application or a software product and its functionality that is the main core thing in the gamma testing so whatever the product or an application which we are going to test in this phase which is gamma phase we will also call it as a release candidate or a gamma candidate gamma testing will be normally done where we are frozen everything almost like more than 99% of the activity will be frozen only the critical bugs will be getting fixed or we will be looked into as part of the gamma testing the gamma testing will be performed not by the testing team so this gamma testing will be performed by a limited end users or a customer so that they can give the feedback and will be taking only critical ones will be fixing as an output of a gamma testing what is walk through in software testing the walk through is a mechanism or a technique which we normally use to review the documents or review the test deliverables normally walk through will be used to review your test strategy test plan test scenarios test cases along with the other stakeholders just to get the right feedback before we are going to execute those test deliverables this will be done more often by doing informal group or in a formal group with your peers managers or fellow team members by grouping all the people or in individual will review the document that kind of techniques we call it as a walk through in software testing normally the walk through is a static method of a quality assurance this is a static method whenever someone develops let's say test plan test strategy so this will be get reviewed or walk through with the project manager test manager product owner product management when we are walking through that document with them they will also review the things and they will provide the feedback 
the security testing is one kind of uh, software testing type where we are mainly concentrating on to find out the security flaws in the application the security testing is also we are ensuring that all the personal data such as your credit card information your debit card information your social security numbers everything is secured in the application let's say if someone is access the application and if takes away all this important information then you can imagine what would be the disaster your application should be able to take care and to ensure that it is well secured from any of the potential hackers so let's understand what is all about localization testing let's say your product supports chinese japanese or any international languages then the localization testing is very important A localization testing is nothing but it focuses on language translation for example let's say i wanted to open a product in the english language then that is a default language and the same application if you wanted to open in hindi then the complete application or product features should be translation into hindi or kannada urdu telugu tamil chinese japanese if any of these people access in their own languages then your product should be able to support that then the product should be able to translate their ui element or many other factors into their respective languages so in localization testing we normally check it on the ui elements if your product and application will have online help then when i am changing uh, to japanese or chinese or hindi then the even uh, online help also should change appropriately and you should also be able to display in the appropriate languages and any error messages normally when the product is supported in the localization the error message should not get hard coded and you should pet the things from the resource bundles uh, every languages will have different resource bundles and it has to map to those resource bundles and it has to take the appropriate inputs from the respective language bundles then the fourth important thing which we are going to validate is all the documents such as user manual installation guide release notes etc any document which are going to provide to the client or customers then whenever the application they open in chinese or japanese then appropriate documents of should get translated into their own languages so in international testing we normally focus on verifying the application under test to uniformly across multiple regions and culture that is the main importance of in internationalization so multiple regions could be chinese J japanese indian korea america africa if you access the application in any of these different regions and application should interpret the things in their respective cultures work as expected even the application getting open in any of these different countries and it has to open across the different different geographical regions when applications being handled for internationalization it should ensure that there is no impact on the functionality there is no impact on the any data everything should work as expected for the appropriate regions and appropriate culture that is the testing we should validate and ensure everything works as part of the analyzation and the last thing is we should validate all the language settings if you are setting if you set the chinese then ap application should work as expected for the chinese language In japanese if we set it then application should behave in an appropriate manner for japanese lo local settings and even the currency settings or date settings where you should work let's say if you open japanese language then japanese currency should open in your application 